we're back on here. I've had my iPad. So I'm running an iPad here with uh, iFly GPS, so it gives me all my situational awareness information. It's just uh, basically your uh, uh, sectional with your chart. Of course, gives you a whole bunch of other information that, that you may want or need. Um, as far as flight planning and weather, and, um, you can zoom in and out, which is really, really nice. Um, and according to this, I've got weather up ahead, and, and uh, especially to the right of me. Um, right now, it looks like I've got a fairly clear shot through, um, so we will be monitoring that. We're in uh, Illinois right now, and um, I'll just walk you through a few of the little things. Um, so I've got my iPad from my, my navigation over here on this in the center side. I've got my engine monitoring stuff. So uh, let's see. Let's point these out. So I've got my RPM as an MGL unit. I got my uh, indicated airspeed, through track autopilot, altimeter. This is a flight line uh, 760 uh, com, which works really really well. It's got built-in. Field flow computer, uh, Hobbs meter, of course TAC, all my switches, uh, manifold pressure gauge uh, required because I am running a turbocharger in this engine. Uh, just a basic slip indicator. Uh, EGT CHT, uh, of course you can tell my CHT isn't working right now. We had a, a broken lead. Yeah, we'll fix that when we get home. Um, the um, Vertical speed indicator. And down here we've got oil pressure, oil temperature, uh, voltage, and fuel level. Now, this is the fuel level for the header tank. And uh, right now it's showing about half. It's probably just slightly above half, probably closer to three quarter because of the, the shape of the tank. But what I'm going to do is I've got my fuel pump selector on. And over here above the iPad, I've got a switch. See, it's a, it's a main fuel pumps. These are for the mains for in the wings. And I'm just going to flip it over to the right tank. So it's going to start transferring fuel out of the uh, right wing tank over into the header. Now, when the header is full, I've got uh, 12 gallons of fuel, so about two hours um, at cruise power setting, uh, which is uh, basically I burn an hour and I transfer fuel. And that way, I've always got an hour reserve. Uh, to kind of keep an eye, we've got this weather ahead of us. I'm going to probably uh, reset the altimeter um, down here in a little bit. Or the, sorry, the uh, autopilot down if these uh, cloud decks start to get any lower. I'm going to monitor right now, my 8,500 feet and holding. So it seems to be a nice, comfortable ride. But if this cloud deck seems to change, it, I'll drop it down a little bit and down to about 7,500 feet. But anyway, so that's the the basics of the panel. Of course, down here we've got uh, uh, basically our, our standard uh, engine control system. Uh, we have a throttle, of course, and I and I use a vernier throttle. Mostly because of the turbocharger, because you don't want to advance your turbocharger too quickly, otherwise it, it can overboost. Um, there's no wastegate on my turbo, so it's just um, adjust the throttle and watch the manifold pressure, and uh, I normally let it peak to around 30 inches on rollout, and uh, then as I accelerate, it will automatically start to add more inches. So if you set it at about 30 and you're rolling, Pretty soon you look down here, you've got around 34, 35 inches, which is where I max it out at on this engine. Uh, of course, your mixture control, that vernier, uh, just for fine controls. Um, as you get higher in altitude, it becomes a little bit more sensitive. Um, this is my fuel shutoff valve. It's just, it goes up to the header tank, and I can disconnect or shut off the header tank fuel from the firewall. Uh, as we'll see a safety feature. This is a trim, electric trim for the elevator. I don't have one for the ailerons, don't need it. Um, Autopilot does a beautiful job. Um, 
12-volt standard uh, again for like your cigarette lighter style and power unit. Of course, up here, up on the panel, we also have a uh, USB plug-in. I use that. Of course, you can see again, I'm charging my uh, iPad with that. And um, it's set up in such a way that if I'm at a show or something, I can turn on this uh, switch here. It's clearance delivery. And that's that will turn on this plug-in but not have the master on. So it's won't bleed any power off. Um, of course, got my ELT remote access, alternator circuit breaker. If I need want to, I can pull that, disconnect the alternator from the system. Um, I have a fresh air fan controller over there on the right side and heat control. Um, right now, I don't need any air conditioning. It's probably about... Oh, 55, 60 degrees. It's a little bit chilly, actually. And it goes up off my vents because it's, it's getting nice chilly. Almost got goosebumps right now. All right. And on this one, I've got the uh, plugins for the headset and mics right here in the center console. Um, on the next one, I might put them behind the seat. And then I've got a nice little baggage compartment where I can hide uh, my wallet, all sorts of goodies in. Uh, very comfortable. So I'm, I'm relaxed. My feet are up underneath the rudder pedals and stretched out a little bit and comfortable. Uh, let's see what else is on this thing. Of course, your ignition switch. And uh, my ignition switch on this, you have your normal on position. But you can also go to aux auxiliary, and that's also an on position for safety reasons. And then this switch is my uh, points electronic. Right now it's running on electronics system. Uh, what else is there on the panel? Uh, this little push button is for a uh, primer solenoid, so I can prime the, the turbo manifold if I need to. And this little blue square switch is for the autopilot. It's an auto level. So if I just push that button, everything goes level on the heading you're on and the altitude you're on. Um, it's little emergency button. You can use it also for, for turning on the autopilot. Um, so anyway, those are the basics. I uh, don't know if there's much else. One of the things we did add, and I'm going to turn the camera around. Oh, we picked it up at the RV place, is this little canopy slide thing. Works really, really nice. You can slide it back and forward, and, and it gives you really good uh, coverage or, or good uh, visibility. And of course we've got headrest back there. Lots of room for luggage. Uh, today my honey's not with me, so I've got my my knapsack in case I have to overnight and uh, it's strapped down of course nicely in, the, in its seat so it doesn't fall against the controls or anything like that. Um, also have a fire extinguisher, uh, Halon. Which is what you would want to have uh, in an aircraft. Um, let's start looking outside. Oh, we got some clouds out here, so um, looks like I just got hit something up here—a big bug or something like that. Look at that, smattered all over the window. Wow. Oh. Either that or bird or something. Who knows? Right now we're actually doing okay. This should clear up in a little bit. And we're on course. Anyway, what, one of the nice things I like about the Sabre Ring, one is the visibility is just amazing. And then of course, you can be fairly tall and, or short and still fit in it comfortably. Um, you got this nice flat area up in here that you can put compass or put your phone on or, or put your pen on it and it won't roll away. It won't roll off the side of your your uh, your, your dash there. Um, we kind of did that on purpose. Uh, it's, the dash is a little bit nostalgic. It's got that little curved feel to it, which is uh, just a throwback to the old Corvairs. Because we are tending to use the Corvairs as our mainstay for the engine, uh, it's 
we thought, well, we can add a, a couple more other little feels for for uh, for it. All righty. Well, I don't know if there's anything else you guys want to know. It's a pretty simple. Good afternoon. Clear tank 81 is inbound. So we are now going through. Clear 1081. Decatur Tower report. Passing Nevis inbound. Current winds are uh, 1104. It's a pretty simple airplane. Um, I'm sorry about the interruptions, but that's just the way it is. Now we're going to be back at the shop. I'm going to load this up and put it on our website and on Facebook and uh, probably uh, YouTube so that people can look at it. And uh, along with a couple other little videos that we took. But this will give you an idea of uh, what it's like to fly in this thing. Now, what people, one thing people always ask is about the room. You know, it's, it doesn't look like a Care 1081 is due with some mountain. Care 1081, runway 36, clear to land. Clear to land, runway 36, clear to land. Well, it doesn't look like a big airplane, but there's a lot of room in it. Um, I'll show you this. I mean, here's my, my hand on top of my head, okay? You got that? And I'm gonna, I've got this much room to the canopy. I can move my head all the way over here. I, ju I just got a lot of room up here. My shoulders are nice and free. Um, I can move forward a lot if I want to. Of course, right now I'm strapped in. And um, got a lot of leg room. I'm, I'm not a big guy, I'm five foot eight, but on my feet are on the rudder pedals, on the rudder pedals now, and I can put them down underneath there. It's kind of com it's comfortable, um, and I thought that's what everybody wanted out of an airplane. Comfortable, fun to fly, efficient. Uh, what could get much better than this? Except for maybe having two of them or a twin, but we'll get into that later. Well, that should be enough for today. Um, Going to be uh, plowing through this weather to get on the other side and get home. So, uh, cheers to all. And uh, as my dad would say, to keep the pointy side forward and the dirty side down. All right. Bye. -bye.